Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are claiming they were almost killed in a high-speed paparazzi car chase in New York City that lasted over two hours. However, Harry's family is reportedly suspicious about this story, and Kate Middleton allegedly believes Harry and Meghan faked the whole thing for PR. Department and mayor have cast doubt on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's claims that they were involved in a, quote, near-catastrophic car chase involving paparazzi. New details are starting to emerge about the alleged car chase through New York City involving Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And even the mayor of New York City said he finds it hard to believe in Harry and Meghan's version of the events. I would find it hard to believe that there was a two-hour high-speed chase. That would be I find it hard to believe. We're now also hearing from sources close to Kate Middleton that Kate and her family are disappointed to see Harry and Meghan trying to score sympathy points, and Kate is allegedly convinced that these two fabricated this story for publicity. A spokesperson describes a relentless pursuit by highly aggressive paparazzi lasting over two hours, and that resulted in multiple near collisions. But the taxi driver who took the couple to a police precinct and the NYPD are telling a different story. It looks like Harry and Meghan Markle are once again getting exposed for creating fake stories to paint themselves as victims. Just months ago, Harry and Meghan were caught using stock footage from random red carpet events in their Netflix documentary and presenting it as proof that the paparazzi won't leave them alone. So in the trailer for her, their Netflix special, yes. there's that shot of um, all the paparazzi, right? Yes. Remember yeah. there's that amazing yes. photo of like 100 camera lenses, there it is. Yeah. That's from a Harry Potter premiere. <gasps> what? As in, that's not from... Nope. Hang on, that's in their doco. Yep, that's, oh. that's in their doco. doco. The as if they doco. were all taking photos of them. That's at the Harry Potter premiere that neither of them were at. Meanwhile, Harry was also exposed for misrepresenting numerous events from his life and his memoir, Spare. But despite getting repeatedly exposed for either exaggerating certain events or outright lying, Harry and Meghan are still trying to convince the public that they are victims. And this time, Harry and Meg are claiming they were almost killed while being chased by the paparazzi for two hours across Manhattan. And if you're wondering, how come you haven't seen any footage or images of a two-hour high-speed chase on the news? Well, that's because there is no evidence, and Harry and Meghan's story is now being called into question by multiple eyewitnesses. To give you some context, on Tuesday, May 16th, Harry, Meghan, and Meghan's mother, Doria Raglan, attended an event at the Ziegfeld Ballroom in New York City, where Meghan was presented with the Women of Vision Award. However, the following day, Harry and Meghan's spokesperson released a statement claiming that after after Harry, Meghan, and Doria left the event, they were involved in a, quote, near-catastrophic car chase. The statement seemingly alluded to the late Princess Diana's death, suggesting that Harry and Meghan could have lost their lives at the hands of a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi. According to the statement, the relentless pursuit lasted over two hours and resulted in multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road, pedestrians, and two NYPD officers. The spokesperson also added that images taken during the alleged car chase should not be shared because dissemination of these images encouraged is a highly intrusive practice that is dangerous to all involved. However, most fans and even some celebs were immediately suspicious about these claims because if there was really a two-hour high-speed chase across New York City, it would most certainly end up on the news. Whoopi Goldberg also called BS on this story, claiming that Harry and Meghan probably exaggerated their encounter with the paparazzi. But I think people in New York know if it was possible to have <laughs> car chases. <laughs> In New York, we'd all make it to the theater on time. <laughs> but I think their spokesperson referenced something that you generally would reference in Los Angeles. That's where you have chases. That's where you can move at high speeds. Right. Um, I, I, I think they were dealing with aggressive paparazzi. Yeah. But I don't think it was no. where, you know, you're watching on TV like this, watching the cars go, because, you know, you can't, it just doesn't work in well, New York. No. Meanwhile, the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, also called into question Harry and Meghan's claims about the alleged car chase. The mayor said he received a briefing about the incident. However, he also admitted that he finds it hard to believe that they were chased at high speed for over two hours across New York City without any collisions occurring. I would find it hard to believe that there was a two-hour high-speed chase. That would be, I find it hard to believe, but we will find out the exact duration of it. But if it's a 10 minutes, a 10-minute chase is extremely dangerous in New York City. Uh, we have a lot of traffic, a lot of movement, a lot of people are using our streets. Uh, any type of high-speed chase uh, that involves uh, something of that nature 
uh, is inappropriate. But that's not all. The taxi driver who drove Harry, Meghan, and Doria also broke his silence and said that the statement issued by Harry and Meghan's spokesperson is definitely exaggerated. According to a reconstruction of the events published by Sky News, Harry, Meghan, and Doria left the Ziegfeld Ballroom around 10.45 p.m. and were pictured leaving in a black SUV. The SUV was escorted by police and NYPD, and eyewitnesses saw the SUV being followed by several photographers in cars, on mopeds, and electric bikes. And according to Sky News, the police convoy drove up and down the street trying to lose sight of the photographers. Between 11 and 11.10 p.m., the SUV carrying Harry, Meghan, and Doria entered a garage on the Upper East Side, and that's when the couple's security team flagged down a yellow taxi driven by Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh drove Harry, Meghan, and Doria around in a circle for about 10 minutes so as not to reveal the location where they were staying, and the trio eventually exited the taxi and left in their SUV. And though Mr. Singh told the press his taxi was indeed followed by two vehicles, he also said that the situation was nowhere near as dangerous as Harry and Meghan's statement claim. When asked to comment on the claims that the car chase was near catastrophic, Mr. Singh said, I don't think that's true. I think that that's all exaggerated and stuff like that. Don't read too much into that. Meanwhile, NYPD Deputy Commissioner Julian Phillips also confirmed in a statement that nothing close to catastrophic happened, and he said that although the behavior of the paparazzi was, quote, challenging, there were no collisions, injuries, or arrests. But it gets even messier. Two days after the alleged car chase, photo agency Black Grid revealed that they received a letter from the Sussex demanding that they hand over all photos and videos of Harry and Meghan taken on the night of the incident. The letter sent by a member of Harry's legal team stated, We hereby demand that Black Grid immediately provide us with copies of all photos, videos, and or films taken last night by the freelance photographers after the couple left their event and over the next several hours. However, Black Grid fired back at Harry and Meghan's demands and responded in a letter that read, In America, as I'm sure you know, the property belongs to the owner of it. Third parties cannot just demand it be given to them, as perhaps kings can do. Black Grid then addressed Harry's lawyer, saying, Perhaps you should sit down with your client and advise them that his English rules of the royal prerogative to demand that the citizenry hand over their property to the crown were rejected by this country long ago. We stand by our founding fathers. So, all in all, it sounds like Harry and Meghan blew this way out of proportion because multiple sources have confirmed that the couple arrived at their destination less than an hour after leaving their venue, and there is no proof of a near-catastrophic car chase that lasted over two hours. But why would Harry and Meghan exaggerate this story so much, knowing that it's something that can be easily verified? Well, as you all probably know, Harry and Meghan's popularity has been on the decline since the release of their Netflix documentary, and they are reportedly getting increasingly frustrated that the American public still hasn't warmed up to them. On the other hand, Harry's brother William and his wife Kate Middleton were recently voted the most popular members of the British royal family, and Harry and Meghan are said to be extremely jealous of Will and Kate's popularity. As for Kate and William's reaction to the alleged New York City car chase, sources close to the royal couple are saying the story definitely sounds exaggerated. However, William and Kate are reportedly not surprised at all because they know just how much Harry and Meghan love to play the victim. One insider told the Daily Beast, William and Kate have put up with shit like this in the past. Everyone understands Harry's anger at the photographers, but making hysterical statements doesn't help matters, especially when, as the Queen might have said, recollections may vary. As for fans, they're saying it's funny how Harry and Meghan left the royal family claiming they can't stand public attention and wanted to live a more quiet life, but now they're attending all these glitzy, high-profile events where they know the paparazzi would see them. One fan said they felt so in danger to leave the security of a town car to jump in a cab, then claim they were chased for two hours in Manhattan? How badly do these two need attention? And another fan added, it didn't take me again, Marco, long to get the focus back on her after missing out on publicity during the King's coronation. But how do you feel about this situation? Do you think Harry and Meghan exaggerated this story for attention? Comment down below and don't miss out on this next video.